Here comes the sun, do 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 do. Here comes the sun. I say it's all right. <laughs> oh. Well, I think the deep freeze is over. Did you guys make it? A lot of people struggling. Uh, we got some systems here off grid. We live off grid, no public utilities. And we're gonna walk you through some of our systems real quick this morning here if you're interested. And uh, our first one we're gonna talk about is our water inside this building here. Now inside this barn right here, this barn is like a big multi-purpose barn. Now, if you guys are new around here, uh, this was the only structure on our whole property when we bought the place. We built our homestead from the ground up totally from scratch. And this huge barn was here. Uh, we use it for the horses. I sectioned off this side for the horses. And then on the other side there, I concreted the floor uh, two years ago, I think. Yeah, two years ago. And uh, that's gonna be the shop, the skid steers in there, the wood lot is up here. This is where the wood lot is. So that's like the wood lot shop and I change oil on the trucks and that's our mechanic area and stuff like that. You're gonna need that kind of stuff um, at your homestead because you're gonna wanna try to save money on servicing your vehicles. You wanna change your own oil and do all the things that you can do yourself that can help save you money, right? So that's, we've implemented that. We didn't have it for the first eight years we were here. We've slowly been saving money and developing our systems and now we have everything dialed in just perfect. We are at negative 25 and uh, none of our systems failed. Our pipes didn't freeze. And if you guys have been here for a while, this has been a little bit of a struggle. It was uh, three years ago, three years ago, we had a really good blast like this too. It wasn't as extreme, but it was pretty good. And this room, I'm gonna show you guys here in a second, um, it was a big struggle to keep uh, this room warm. Now this room that I'm gonna show you guys houses 3,000 gallons of our water. We live 100% off of rainwater. So three years ago, we had some really challenging um, cold. And one thing I wanna to stress to you guys, you know, don't, don't get on the other side of your struggle and then get relaxed, right? Don't uh, just brush it off. Make sure you pay attention to what that struggle was and then make adjustments for it, right? So the next time it comes around, you won't struggle. So three years ago, we had an Arctic blast and we had uh, all kinds of heat going on there. I had a kerosene heat, I had propane heat, and the heat was just leaving the room because it's just metal, right? It's just a pole barn. And man, it was a struggle and some stuff froze and uh, some pipe busted and we really had a struggle with it. So when we came out of winter two years ago, that was our hardest winter we had and we've only had our water system now for four years. So I said, that's it. We have got to take uh, precautions or take measures to secure that room because if that system freezes, we have no water. Right? And then if it really freezes, it could actually damage the cisterns and the ball valves, and then we'll really have no water. So then we'll be back to when we started when we first got here, where we hauled water for years in five gallon buckets, one gallon uh, receptacles. You know, we took showers out of buckets and, and one gallon jugs. So, you know, we have been here and we've struggled to make our systems and we took our time in implementing them. I know, I'm just going on and on and on. So I'm gonna take you guys over here and show you this, but all I'm trying to say is, after we had that uh, challenge, the next spring, I got on this room, it was my top priority, and I was like a badger, I did not let up until I got the people out here, until I secured this room, okay? Then last year, we had a pretty mild winter. So I was like, yeah, you know, I'm glad we did it, but it was pretty mild winter. This year, was it's probably our most extreme temperatures for the longest amount of time. We're like almost three weeks in to barely getting above zero and going way below zero. So it's way out of the norm for our temperatures. That's another thing. When you guys make your systems, if you're gonna live off grid, make your systems beefy. So if, if it normally gets to 20 degrees in winter, prepare your system for a zero degree event and for long term. So that way you're totally prepared, right? 
It's better to have an ounce of prevention than a pound of cure. Uh, spend a little bit more money up front, beef up the system just a little bit, and then whenever it comes your way, like what we just had, you'll be able to handle it. Ha! All right, man, I'm just giving you guys some clues and tips. All right, here's what's inside this room. This is where all of our water is. Okay. Let's see if I can shut this. The sun's coming up and it's causing some light issues here. Let's see if I can shut this door for you. Now, what I have to do, too, is I have to secure this door a little better. It's just I just put up a sliding barn door, and I have a big gap at the top, so I am losing heat in this room, but... It maintains a lot more than it loses with uh, this uh, spray foam insulation. Okay, that was the answer to my problem. So what I did was um, I started thinking about how I could secure this room. I was thinking about, uh, you know, just finishing off the walls, putting insulation inside, you know, of the runs, and then putting foam insulation in there, and then kind of sealing it in. But then I thought to get the best insulation to get the most R value, I'll need to secure this room airtight, right? And I thought the best way to probably do that is to call in the spray foam guy, okay? So I called in the spray foam guy and he came in and it wasn't even, you know, too expensive. It was relatively reasonable. And uh, he came out and he blew in this whole room here, right? The ceiling, the walls, everything you see right here. And these are 3,000 gallons worth of water right here. It's 1,500 gallons in this tank, 1,500 gallons in this tank. The rain comes off of the roof, comes through my system here, goes through a first flush, goes into these tanks. And then these tanks gravity feed all the way down to our log cabin and out to our hydrants. We live 100% off of rainwater and we have for years, okay? So this right here was the bee's knees. This is, this is a recommendation. If you guys don't want to put your stuff in the ground, right? So then you have to pump it out, which causes more mechanical uses, uh, more problems, more power, more pumps. You know, our saying is no pumps, no power, no problem. But uh, if you guys are going to put an above ground system in, you're really going to want to think about putting in a room like this. You know, it took a couple of years for us to figure it out. So you get to save yourself all those headaches. And uh, with just a little bit of heater here, I'll show you right here. So I can keep this room pretty good with just this big buddy heater right here. And with any water system, gravity fed or anything else really, the ball valves are pretty much your weakest spot. Okay. These, this ball valve right here just connects the two tanks. And these are your weakest spots. Okay. And you do not want your ball valves to freeze. Um, <laughs> Cause that'll really mess up your system and all your water will come out and you won't be able to use it and it just turns into a big mess that's why you can't use ibc totes outside during winter time they'll turn into a block of ice it takes them a while you'll be able to use it for a while but when it really gets cold you're never going to win that battle it's going to freeze up bust the ball valve and that's going to leave your ibc tote rendered useless and uh then you have to turn it into a sawdust holder <laughs> <laughs> so it's still pretty cold outside see that there's no ice in there if that was uh if it was cold in here and i hit that it would be like clunk, clunk. And don't ask me how i know so the water's very uh loose in here plus once you heat up this room right once you heat up a room like this with all this water this is a lot of mass so it takes a long time for this room to actually give in to the cold if that makes sense so you keep this room warm, it's say, you know, 30, 40 degrees, and the water starts accepting that heat, and then the water, you know, it's not getting like hot water or anything, but it stays a little bit warm, and so when the cold air comes in, it takes a lot more for the cold air to cool down 1,500 gallons. So you, you got a little time, you know, between normal and getting cold and freezing up right but if you can maintain it at a decent time where it never really freezes up you can keep your tanks like this you know flexible and free uh, most of the winter time all the winter time so that was the main thing for us so right now what i have to do is get uh, the horses water right uh, because that's been a challenge as well <laughs> so i keep a hose inside of here too the reason why i keep a hose inside of here is because it stays warm as well so if you have a, uh, you know, 
a hose, you don't want to leave it outside. Then when I want to go run water through it, there's ice in here and then I can't get any movement. <laughs> so I keep, <coughs> I keep the hose inside of here and that keeps all the ice or water that has been in here since uh, I used it last from freezing and then I'm ready to go uh, at a moment's notice here. So I got to hook this up to the spigot. This is the first flush right here, okay? And what I do is I, I, uh, I'll explain this all again in a video coming up, but during the winter time, I try to leave this a little bit full, you know, not too much. It depends on what's going on. And I, I want to use this for the horse water. Okay. So this is our first flush. So anytime the rain comes off of this building, it hits the building, the first 200 gallons you know, 100 and, I think there's 175 gallons here. The first 175 gallons of rainwater comes into this tank because that's the dirty water. It's washing off all the bird poop and pollen and, you know, leaves and sticks and dust and road dust and everything else you got out in the country or in the city or wherever you are. And uh, it goes into here. And then once that, it's like a calculation. Once that amount of water gets into this tank, then it's deemed the roof clear, and then all the clean water goes into the big tanks. Okay, you following me? So I use this tank right here for my livestock, right? So I'll just hook this up here. Now what I am gonna be doing too this summer, so stick around here if you guys haven't hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, so you can follow along on what we're doing. But I'll be uh, hooking this system up. See, this hose is, yeah, it's okay. But I think what I want to do is put a spigot through the wall, right off of this tank here. I'll put a spigot through the wall here with a uh, frost-free, you know, it doesn't freeze up type of spigot. And then that way, I won't have to use the hose. I can leave this on and then just go outside, turn on the water, and it'll come out just like it does at your house. <laughs> So that's what I'm going to work on this year, and I'm going to pump the hose. See? So there's always advancements. Always get your systems in place, see what works, and then once you get your systems in place and you're seeing how it works, you start making adjustments. See? But you want to get the bare bones of it all down. All right, I can hear Smokey and Sadie just walked up here, so they must know it's uh, time to get some action done here. Get them some water. Everybody's been stressed out with this weather, boy, I tell you. All right, let's do it. Morning, Sadie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Morning, Smokey Joe. Boy, those sheep are bothering me this morning too. <laughs> Must be a little hungry. All right, let's go get some uh, gravity-fed water here. See, this the hose just it lets the water run through it. It's kind of a slow deal, but it works. And there you go. Boy, those sheep are on me, huh? All right, all right, all right. Mama's coming. We're going to go get your bottle. Hold on, Norman. <laughs> so the reason why I get rid of the trough in the wintertime is because if you leave ice in there, it's going to expand it and bust it. And don't ask me how I know. So try not to leave your troughs filled up unless you got some kind of heat source in there or uh, really unless you have a heat source because it will expand your tank and bust it right open. And we have our big pond over there. Right? So what I do is, in the winter time, I'll fight it and battle it, and then I'll throw my hands up, and then I'll start using the pond, and then they walk down, and they get their drinks out of the pond. So This will take a little while to fill up. I'm going to go down and uh, see what Stacy's doing. I think she's getting the bottle ready for Norman, and uh, we'll see what she's doing, and maybe you guys will go feed Norman, all right? So I just wanted to show you our off-grid water and what we did to uh, secure it, you know, make it right after that last cold we have. So my big message here is don't take that weather lightly and don't get complacent you know 
Don't say, oh, it's sunny now and we made it. And don't forget about what happened. Don't forget about your weak spots. So if you, if you forget about them, then they're going to come back and bite you. I'm just telling you right now, I'm walking around here. I got my feathers all fluffed out and, you know, chest all sticking up because I was a good boy. I paid attention and it paid off for me this year. We never lost nothing at our place. All right, let's go see what Stace's doing. Well, what a break from that weather. Whew, we made it. I'm so excited. We made it through. So we're having a little break. So the sun's out and I'm loving it. It's probably going to feel like it's 80 degrees and we're on spring break. <laughs> Norman's doing really well during this cold weather. So I'm going to go out and feed him. He's been doing fantastic. So I'm going to make a little formula for him. He's getting rainwater, just like we drink here. Got to warm it up a little bit. Test it with my finger for my baby. Let's see. All right, put his formula in there. Get him ready because he's hungry. The one tip, if you guys have never bottle fed, like a goat or a, a little lamb, the milk replacer is so sticky. So my little uh, words of advice are make sure when you're done with it that you wash it off right away because it gets it's like glue. So I've been washing lots of things because I feed him like six times a day. All right. Now Norman has his bottle. It's time for Doug and I to get our tea this morning. Here's a little tip for some of you guys. I've already brought my water to a boil and then I put it up on the warming rack just to kind of cool off a little bit because a lot of times when people make tea, they bring it to a boil and then you just pour it in whatever you're making your tea with. Well, that can make your um, tea taste bitter. So it's always good to kind of let it hang out, restructure a little bit, and not have that, I guess, that boiling taste because it doesn't make your tea taste very well. So I let it set for a few minutes before I pour it in the cup. So I'm going to put it in our cup, and then Doug likes his tea with a little maple syrup in it. And I like mine with no maple syrup in it. So I'll make mine. And so it's really cool to have these little handy dandy tea balls. They work out great. And just fill them up. You know, you can do three tablespoons or so of your tea. And I just stick them in here. And then for some of you guys that don't have the tea balls, you can also get unbleached tea bags to make tea. And this tea is our chocolate tea that we sourced. And you can get this tea, it's in stock again, at offgridwithdougandstacy.com. Mmm, smells so good. Who doesn't like chocolate? Tea's done, Norman's hungry, let's go feed him.
during our big Arctic blast for those couple weeks, uh, I was coming out here a lot, you know, breaking the water. I mean, it was a lot. It was cold, bundling up, putting all the layers on. Ooh, I mean, that's what like consumed our lives, just taking care of everyone. But they did great here. It was good. I got to be out here with the animals and see how they're doing. And they, you know, did a great job. And he is getting so big now, I have to keep him on the um, straw bale so that he can eat. And notice how just, we had a couple days, the sun came out, it just got a teeny bit warmer. And it's crazy, these sheep have this thick coat on them because these are hair sheep. And you can see big chunks of hair coming out now. They're already sitting, and look at Norman. He had this big furry coat. And now look, he's got little um, patches on him. So Doug and I call him patches now. And did you guys notice Lanky Larry on our way in here, he was with his mom, Elsa, and I bottle felt his mom last year. And he's so funny how he nurses because he gets down on his knees and he goes back and forth under her belly. And normally a lamb will go from one teat and it'll run around and go the other way, but he just stays underneath her on his knees and goes back and forth and it's so cute. I think you're done, are you done? Yes. You ate all your food. Good job. All right, you have to stay. Go back with your people. I'll see you in a little bit. Go on. Well, it sure feels good to get our systems in place. This year was awesome. We made it these couple weeks with this Arctic temperatures with our water situation. Cause I'll have to tell you out of anything living off grid, I think the water is the most important and Doug got everything zoomed in and it worked out great. So I'm really happy about that. And if you guys are interested in getting some chocolate tea, you can get it now on offgridwithdougandstacy.com. Have a great day and look forward to, cause today it's a nice day. We're gonna be starting on mom's cabin again. So you can look forward to some of those videos. So you have a great day and I'll see you guys later.